Okay, for today, we are doing our first day of logs. And we have a long set of uh, things to learn. But logs and exponential form are the main thing. All right. So I'm going to, in fact, start with a quick... Uh, why do we have logs? If the problems were all this easy, and you could say, oh, x equals 2, then you could do logs in your head. Because really, this is a log problem. Anytime you have an exponential, you can rewrite it as a log problem. But I think you can tell pretty easily that I could change this to a 20, and all of a sudden it wouldn't be so easy to do in your head. And therefore, you'd need to be able to set up a log for it. And then often the log can be, can be simplified down without a calculator. In fact, that's what we're going to do today. But just so you get this, do you get if 5 to the second is 25, then my answer for x must be less than 2? 5 to the 1 point something. Obviously, 5 to the 1 power, there was a 1 right here, that'd be too small, right? And a 2 is too big, so it must be 1 point something. Exactly what is it? You'd find it by going log base 5 of 20 equals x. And I want you to learn how to say that right. A lot of people go log 520. No. You're, that doesn't actually, that means log 520. You have to say the word base for this number and the word of for that number. The base is obviously the base, but the other number, the of number, is called the argument. We could argue about why they named it the argument, but it is. It's the argument. All right, now, do you get that this spawned this. I got the numbers from the first thing to make the second thing. And you here's some simple rules. You always read it from the left to the right, and then you always have to jump around. If I start with this number, I say 5, then I have to jump to the other side over here, and then I'm going to come back over here. So it's 5, log base 5 of 20 equals x. Same thing happens if I have a log. I just wrote a false statement because I don't know what log base 3 of 7 is. I just threw a 12 in there. And you'll see why it's false because if I rewrite it, the first number I come to as I read from left to right is a what? A 3. And then you have to jump around. So you have to jump to the other side. So I'd say 3, what? 2 to 12 equals 7. And clearly not a true statement, right? Okay. So I'd like you to try to rewrite this one for me. Log base A of B is equal to Z. And I'd like you to compare it with the person that I pair you with. I'll pause for a second while I do that. Okay. So A to the z equals b. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Okay, good. Now, what's the point of all of this stuff? Again, it goes back to this. If you have this problem and you need a way to solve it, logs can solve them for you. But once you've got logs, you've got you know problems like this. Log uh, base 5 of 1 fifth is equal to x. You can solve a lot of them in your head. And granted, a calculator can solve this because you, you have a log button on your calculator. But you even have to do some manipulation even to use the calculator on this because calculators can only do base 10. What base is that? Base 5, and therefore you have to be able to rewrite bases and say change it from base 5 to base 10. So the first, that's the first thing I'm going to teach you is called a base change. All right, I'm going to make the numbers a little simpler to start with. Let's say this is just a 2. Okay, then to rewrite this in a different base instead of base 5. You learned this last year, but I don't think there's much point in making you try to recall it. I don't think the research shows that you will be any smarter by somebody doing that. So log base 2 over log base 5. Now you might say, wait a minute, Mr. Server, you just took the bases out of it. There's no base. Ah, but there is a base. If I don't write a base, what base is it? Base 10. Good. Base 10 is called the common log. 
it is the most common base ever used for logs, and therefore your calculator only does logs in base 10. I know there's a few calculators that are brand new that can do different bases, but that's new as of like last year, and calculators have been around doing this stuff for 50 years. So it's very common to use just base 10. The other base that is used a lot is base E. Do you remember that from last year, log base E? Yep, log base E. They'll, they'll shorten that to ln of 5. I don't even know how that's shortening, uh, it, and it doesn't seem to be worth it to me because whenever a kid has ln 5, I just tell them, write that as log base E because that's exactly what ln means, is log base E. What is E again? It's about what? Two point what? Two point seven one eight. Okay, so about two point seven ish. So about three ish. Okay, so it's it's a fancy number that you will find out. There'll be a day will come in calculus, or maybe even later this year, where we will uh, explain why e is such a powerful number in calculus. It's a special, very special number, only one of its kind. Okay, so back to a base change. This could be changed to any base you want, actually. I told you you should do it this way so you could put it in a calculator because it would be base 10. But the weird thing about it is that if I had rewritten it as log 2 over log 5, I could pick any base I wanted. Say I want it to be base E, I can. It's equal to the exact same thing. Because now both numbers just got commensurately smaller. or bigger. Say I make it log base 28. Sure. It's fine. Because now they have the same base. Then each number, this the ratio when you divide the two stays the same. It's kind of like saying 5 tenths comes out exactly the same as 1 half. When you divide them, they have the same ratio, right? Okay, so it could be any base you want. So if I, if they gave you a problem like this on the AP Calc test, you, you dream for one this easy. Uh, they might, they could say, uh, first of all, everybody rewrite this. Rewrite this as an exponential problem. Turn it to the person next to you, see if you get the same thing for your rewrite. Now, change it to base E. Right now it's got a base 3. Change it to base E. Well, first thing you do is log 8 over log 3. That's how you change the base. But I said to change it to base E. I told you before, you can take any base you want. There we go. Log base E of 8 over log base E of 3. All right, I've been saying these over and over again. You're going to be surprised how many people are not going to be able to say this properly. Write in the words what I just wrote on the board with every word correct. Write in words what I just wrote on the board without throwing in extra words. And without missing some. I see some people looking at other people's iPads because they forgot words. Okay. All right, Mr. B, tell me the uh, first three words you would say. Yes. Uh, log, base. log base two. That's one of the biggest ones. People forget the word base. And then what's the next word? This is really important. Yes? Of is correct. Log base 2 of 12 is x or equals x are just fine. Okay. All right. Next thing. There's a bunch of little tricks you can do with logs. Properties, if you will. So here's an example of one. Uh, Log base 3 of 9 is equal to x, and you can solve this by rewriting it or using a trick that makes it a lot faster. Yes, you could say 3 to the x equals 9 and go, oh, x must be 2. 
Or you can say that 9 could be rewritten as a 3 squared, and then the answer is the power. Let me explain that to you. Do you get I could do now a rewrite 3 to the x equals 3 to the second? And you get if the bases are the same, then the answers for the exponents must be the same? All right. So if that's true, then tell me this. Log base 5 of 25 is equal to x. What's x got to be? Because 25 could be written as 5 squared. And then the answer is the power. If these are the same, do you get how both of those are a base in their own right? The 5 is a base because it's the base of the log. Do you get that the 5 on the upper level here is the base because it's got a 2 on it for an exponent, which makes it a base? Therefore, do you get that the bases are the same? Is it kind of a safe way to say that? The bases are the same. Wouldn't we, didn't we learn before that if we had the bases the same, if this is the same as this, then the answer for the exponents have to be equal to each other? All right, yes. Uh, you can have a log inside a log. It looks like this. In fact, that's one of my properties. I'll jump to it now. Log base 8. 8 to the power of log base 8 of 3. And the answer is 3. Because the bases are the same. Do you get how this is a base in its own way? Because it's got something as a power on it? Do you get that this is a base because it's the base in the log? If the base is the same, then the answer is, in this case, not the exponent, it's the other one. Now, this is just a way to just say it to yourself. This is not a official mathematically. Here's the official mathematically way to figure out that the answer is 3. If there's no variable, do you agree that I could say that this whole thing equals x? Okay. Now I can rewrite it. But the thing that confuses people is they think it's already a log. This is not a log. What is it right now? If it's not a log, it's got to be something that's with an e. And close, a something equation, an exponential. This is a, This has got an. This is written in exponent form. You got a base here, and you got its exponent right there. So if it's in exponent form right now, we can write it as a log. So log. And if I'm going to say log, I always have to have a base, right? Well, what's the base? Base 8. And now, remember me saying you always have to jump to the other side? Of x. And remember, you got to always jump back? Equals log base 8 of 3. And all of a sudden, do you see that that and that are the same? And therefore, x must equal 3? That's why we know that that's true. Yes, sir. It, okay, if you, if you get that it happens right away, cool. I'm trying to show you mathematically why, if these two are the same, that's the answer. Because a lot of people don't want to just know the trick. They want to know the math behind it. Yes? It's a good question. It depends on the, on the situation. There's a lot of times where we can just say, oh, that's a property. He knows the property. This is 3. But if the whole point of the problem was, explain why the answer to this one is 3, then you'd have to write it up. All right. So, but I hope you get at when it's all said and done, then this kind of a problem becomes easy. I want you to think about why it would become easy. Think it through. So I've told you a whole bunch of little things. One of them was what to do with ln. What did I say to do with ln? ln is the same as log base e. And therefore you should immediately write it as log base e. Now do you see that those two are the same and therefore the answer is 5? Does that make sense? All right, here's another one. ln 7. I don't know what it is. Therefore I could write it as equal to x. And therefore, I could do a rewrite. Now, if everybody rewrite that as an exponential. Hmm. 
Mr. PA in the back. What did I say LN should be rewritten as? Log base E. Okay. And now do the rewrite on that. E to the X equals 7 is correct. Good. Now, which of these two forms is considered more simplified? The original or the answer? The original. But you can be asked to do a rewrite. In fact, your homework for today says, if the problem is a log, rewrite it as an exponential. That's what I've done in this case. If the problem is an exponential, rewrite it as a log. That would be like if I said, here's the problem, and you'd have to write, oh, well, so it's an exponential right now, so I'm going to write it as a log. So I'm going to use log, and then i got to figure out what base I should use. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the base, E. And then he always said to jump around to the other side, 7, and then jump back, equals X. So rewriting is the king of all uh, logs. It's like the main, the secret to all logs is being able to go back and forth between exponentials and logs. If you get stuck, I'm telling you, it solves half of even the hard pre-calc problems here. If you get stuck, it's probably because you haven't rewritten it in the other form. If it's an exponential, make it into a log, and sometimes the log properties will lead you to the answer. If it's a log and you're stuck, rewrite it as an exponential, and sometimes you'll go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's just when I rewrite it as an exponential, it's just this. So obviously the answer is 49. So rewriting is the key. That's the biggest thing. But now I have to make sure you understand a whole bunch of properties. I'm going to pause for a second while I get myself ready. Okay, so here's the big old list of properties. And I'm going to save that by putting it over on my uh, second screen. Because these are really, really important and powerful. And they're used a lot both this year and in calculus next year. You have to know all those things, and I'll have to move on to the next slide, but hey, I can leave it up on my second screen. Okay, so let's talk through a few of these that you already probably know. Uh, we just did this one a minute ago where I said you could put it in the calculator form by doing that. Do you get what's going on there? They, re they rewrote this as log B over log A. And they changed it to base 10. Do you get, I told you before, you could have changed that to any base you wanted, including base E, including base 2.3. It could be any base you want. That 10 right there can be any base you want. Okay, that's how you do a rewrite. Let's practice that right now. So... Let's say they had this, log base 3 is 7. Make that into base 14. Log 7 over log 3 is how I'd start, because that's how you'd put it in a calculator. And that implies base 10. But then I change it to a 14. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. You get base change. Let's look at another one of these things. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Notice it says equals zero, like the answer cannot change from zero if the what is what? The argument is one. Do you remember me saying a dumb statement last? If you won the argument, you get nothing. That's right. See if the one right here is in the argument spot? I taught my kids last year, if you won the argument, you get nothing. Because it's true in life, too. Oftentimes, I end up in stupid arguments with my wife. Not necessarily like yelling, screaming arguments, but we're arguing over something really stupid. And you can even win your argument and prove that the other person is wrong. And you get nothing out of it except the other person is angry with you. Best to just let those things go. Pepperoni versus sausage. Come on, really? So, anyway. All right, so if you've won the argument, if you put a 1 right there, you can have a really complicated-looking question, but the answer comes out to 0. Even if they throw in something weird down here, what's the answer? 0. And now, there is a way to save yourself if you don't know the answer. Remember how I said if there's no variable in it, you could say equals x? 
and then you can just do a rewrite. Remember how I said rewrites can solve half of all the problems you ever have? And then you go 43.7 to the x equals 1, and then you think it through and go, oh, I could put it to the 0 power, and therefore x must be 0. Okay, so that's one of our properties. So I'm going to check them off over on the board over here. Got this one. I've taught you this one. All right. Next thing is about logs in general. They're not supposed to have certain numbers here or here. A, which is the base number, can't be certain things. In fact, I'm just going to tell you a domain for A. A has to be greater than 0, and A cannot equal 1. I'll show you why. If I had log base 1 uh, of, let me think about this. Let's say I had that. Then I'd have to say that 1 to the power of x will equal 5. I want you to think about that for a second. If you take 1 and you put it to a power, which means times itself. 1 times itself a whole bunch of times is not ever going to be 5. Do you get why you're not allowed to have a 1 for a base? Now, I know you can set up a problem where 1 could work in a base. But that doesn't mean that we're allowed to have 1s down there. It's part of the just the setup of logs. You can't have a 1 down here. Yes? Nope, because of a definition of logs. But I hear you, you could set up a, a problem, you know, you could make a problem. In your world, you could allow A to be zero in certain circumstances. But, again, the rules, this can't be negative, and therefore greater than zero. And it can't be zero, and it can't be one. This has certain rules on it, too. But we just explored for a second that it could be one. Okay, but it can't be negative. So the rules for B are that B has to be greater than 0. Not greater than or equal to 0. You can't be 0 either. B has to be bigger than 0. So when you're asked this question, log base 3 of x squared plus 3, do you get why they might ask you for the domain that comes from this problem? You get from what I just said a second ago that that right there is the argument in this log. And therefore, it has to be what? Greater than zero. So could you set x squared plus 3 greater than zero and solve it? Absolutely. I think you'd find if you graphed it, here's x plus 3. Is it ever less than zero? No, so I have no worries with this domain. But what if... I had said x squared minus 3 and it looked like that. Then could your domain have issues? Yeah, you've got to be careful because you're only allowed to have it be greater than 0. And so if you don't, you figure out, oh, it has to be from here over and from here over, it would work, but it would not work in there. Okay, so that's how they're going to tie in domain. And that, again, comes from the property. Let's see if I can find that properties page again. If there's a zero here, there's no answer. You're not allowed to have a zero here or here. In fact, those can't be negative either. So, all right. We talked about this one. That's an example like this. 7 log base 7 of 24. And the answer to that, again, would be what? 24. Okay. We got that one covered. Next one. What is it? One. And you know the reason why it's one? Wouldn't you agree that three is the same as three to the one power? And do you remember me saying that you could always say equals x if we don't have a variable in the problem? And then could I rewrite this? Sure, I could say 3 to the x equals 3 to the 1. And if the bases are the same, x must equal 1. 
And therefore, it's smarter to not memorize the little uh, statement that says this, log base A of A equals 1. To me, it's smarter to memorize it that whatever the power is on this variable, that's what the answer is. Because do you get if this was a 17 right there? That the answer would be 17? Because then I'd say 3 to the x equals 3 to the 17, and I'd have a problem like this, and if the bases are the same, then x must equal 17. All right, so then that comes in when you have this kind of thing, log base 9 of 81 equals x. Could you rewrite it? Sure, but there's a faster way. You can look at the 81 and say, oh, that's 9 squared. If the 81 is 9 squared, you get the answers too. All right. Let's see if you remember a couple of your powers that are really important. What in the world does that mean? Square root. So what's the 81 to the 1 half power? 9 just means square root. Okay, how about this? What is it? One-fifth. To the negative one power means you take your number and you flip it, where you put one over your number. So let's say I had one-third to the negative one. That's equal to three. It's one over one-third, which then you can flip and multiply, becomes three. Okay, so negative powers are important, and to the one-half power is important. So all of that's said so that you can handle things like this. Okay, figure out the answer. Good, don't say it. If I were you, I'd do a rewrite and figure out, I guess that's a square root symbol. And figure out what's really going on with the whole rewrite thing. Mr. DM, can you rewrite it for me? Three to the... Three squared is nine, can't argue with that, so let's just say square root of nine to the negative one, and then we can simplify it even further. Okay. Now some of you might be twitching a little bit like, didn't we, when you did a square root, didn't, didn't we do like absolute values? That was only if it was a variable involved. Okay, there's no variable here, so therefore we can do this, and we're almost done. Finish it. Those are the same. That must be the same. X must equal negative one. Very good. All right, give you a little more complicated one. How now, brown cow? Do a rewrite. You, you might be like, what? there's nothing on the other side. So now let's say equals x. Figure out the answer. Don't say it. Figure it out. Compare it with the kid next to you, and don't show them for another few seconds because they're still working on it. Okay, I got to get rolling again. I'm saying equals x. And then I'm going to rewrite 3 to the x equals, hmm, boy, wouldn't that be nice if that was actually a 3 over there? So you force it to be a 3. And you say, instead of it being a 27, couldn't I say that's really 3 to the third power? Okay, so then at least I got a 3 in it. Square root, I put a 2 there just to remind you, it's actually there's lots of kinds of roots. That is a square root. Granted, if we erase the two, it would still mean square root because it kind of defaults to that. But And then there's a negative one out here. Hmm. Okay. Now you have to write it as a fraction exponent. Did any of you remember that this is really the roots go on the bottom? Do you remember me saying that dumb little statement? Three to the sum fraction power and the root goes on the bottom. What is the root? It's the two. The square root goes on the bottom. And then there's a cube in here like to the third power that's a normal to the third power and so it goes here and then the last thing is it had a negative up in its power so we make it negative and therefore your answer is x must be negative three halves 
Any of you actually pull that off before I wrote the answer down? All right, four of you, nice job. I get that was hard, but it's not impossible. Let's review how that happened. Roots go on the bottom, just like in plants. So here's the root. That goes on the bottom. And then the other normal power, which is this tree here, goes on the top. And it had a negative, so that goes out in front. I'll give you another one like that. Uh, log base, let's make it a two this time. Just need more possibilities. Uh, the cube root of uh, 16, and let's make it to the negative one. Remember, I've told you several little things, one of which was if there isn't a variable, you can say equals x. Then that you should rewrite. Rewriting solves half of all of the hard, even pre-calc level log problems. And then you'll need to be able to handle your fraction exponents. So equals x. Now 2 to the x equals all of that. It would be nice if that 16 was written as a 2, and it can be, Mr. H, 2 to the 4th. And therefore, I could say that this is really 2 to the what fraction power? 4 thirds. Roots go on the bottom. That's the root. Goes on the bottom. That's the normal part of the power. Goes on the top. And what am I missing? A negative, because that negative 1 multiplies in and goes negative 1 times all that. And therefore, it's negative four-thirds. And then their answer, if this is the same as this, means that x must be negative four-thirds. Raise your hand if you got that one right. That's about as complicated as they'll get. But you do need to understand another couple properties that I haven't checked off my list yet. One is that if I have log base three of four, that one's not going to come out nice, right? Because it's not the same base. These aren't the same, so I can't just say, oh, the answer is two. But I can rewrite my 4 as 2 squared. Can't really argue with that, right? 2 squared is the same thing as 4, right? And then how does that help me at all? Only if I wanted to expand my log problem. Because that squared, that 2, the power on it, can go out to the front and say 2 times all that. Huh? <laughs> okay. And I'll explain why in a moment. So let's say it was a 9 here. Then 9 is the same as 3 squared, right? And I know that you're just going to say, oh, so the answer is 2. Yeah, but what if you wanted to expand the problem? The 2 could go out to the front here and be 2 times all that. And that tells me that log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1, isn't it? And then 2 times 1 is equal to 2, isn't it? So it works. So even if it's a weird thing like log base 3 of a to the 7th, I don't know what the answer is, but I could rewrite it as 7 log base 3 of a, couldn't I? And then what if they were to define log base 3 of a was equal to 12? You'd know, oh, well that's 12, so then it's 7 times 12. Point is, can you get that a power here can come and drop down in front? Okay. Some people call that the power rule. All right. Next one is, now let's see as I go over to this other board, I can say we've talked about this one. That was like 7 to the log base 7 of 12, where the answer is 12. We've talked about that. We've talked about how you can't have a 0 there. We've talked about how if these two are the same, the answer is the exponent on it. Check. And then... This one we just talked about, that's where if we have a power here and it drops down to the front, check mark. So the last two are these two. And I'll give you an example of how you'd use that. Now well, let's say we had log base 3 of 4 times n. I'm going to put a little dot in there because otherwise it looks like 4xn. Do you get that that is a single log? What if it would help me to break it into two logs? Do you remember that multiply can be changed into add? Log base 3 of 4 plus log base 3 of n. 
I expanded this little multiply problem here, and multiply goes with add. Much like divide log base 7 of 4 thirds, divide goes with subtract. Log base 7 of 4, and now what do you think I'm going to say? Minus. Log base 7 of 3. That is called expanding and condensing. This was an expansion. But I didn't even expand it all the way. Somebody look in there and see one of those little rules I taught you. Yes, sir? Uh, you can factor if you can factor it, you should. You're right. So that 4 can be factored into 2 squared. 2 times 2 is factoring, isn't it? But then 2 times 2 means 2 squared, and then that 2, that's the little exponent, goes in front. That expands it because it takes it up an extra... If it takes up more space, and it does, then you've expanded it. All right, so contracting is uh, probably even more important. That can all be munched down into one log. Log of blah. See if you can do it. You're condensing it. Good thing is, by doing a power lesson on logs today, we have learned a ton about logs, and, by t and tomorrow I only have to touch up, add a little bit to it, and we'll be good. So tomorrow we'll be able to grade the CAN lab. All right. So did you realize that this 2 could come up, or sorry, 3, can go up and be a power on that x? And then did you realize that since this is an add problem, we could combine it into log base 2, since they have the same bases, of x to the third. If it's an add, I do multiply by y. There it is. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. That is a review of everything log that you have learned. And now let's look at the homework for today so you can get a feeling for where you're headed here. The homework for today starts right here. It says day one. Now, this first page, even though they are, like, there are a lot of them, they are very easy because all they're asking you to do is rewrite them. I told you that you'll solve half your log problems is by rewriting them. Rewrite exponentials as logs and rewrite the logs as exponentials. You do not have to solve anything. You just rewrite. So this one, it's a exponential right now. How can I tell? Because the word log isn't in it. So then I make it a log. Log base what? 5 of what? 1 over 125 is equal to negative 3. Now think about it. Do you get why it's equal to negative 3? Because that right there could be written as 5 to the negative 3. But you don't have to even know that. You just have to be able to rewrite this. All right. This one over here is a log. So I'm going to rewrite one log for you. That would be 5. Always start with the first number you come to as you read from left to right. And then you always jump around. 5 to the second. Equals 25. They should come out to true statements. Otherwise, you're probably doing something wrong. All right. Remember what I said when you hit LN? Immediately rewrite it as what? Log base E. So when you hit number 14, I hope you immediately write this as log base E of E equals 1. And then do a rewrite. Very difficult to do a rewrite unless you have a base. Now if I rewrite it, I've got a base. Now I can say e to the... Anyway, I'll let you finish it from there. I have to add a little bit of challenge. Okay, moving on to the next page. This has just got no room to work, and so what I'm doing is, oddly enough, skipping the odds. Because these are, like, it's weird because they go every other number, and yet I can still skip all the odds, and it'll end up being like this. It'll end up giving me more room underneath each problem. You got more room to actually write your answers. 
I think what happened here is there was a middle column that had like problems 17 and 20 and 23 in it. And those, the middle column got whited out, but it's still too many problems in my opinion. Okay, and then on to this page. <clears throat> and notice it says domain. Remember how I was saying this part right here has to be greater than zero? Okay, so then all this is is 4x plus 8 has to be greater than zero. Remember, if it was equal to zero, there'd be no answer for it. So we have to say greater than zero. Then there can be an answer for it. And then you just solve it. X must be greater than whatever it comes out to. Let me think. In this case, subtract 8. X must be greater than a negative 2. Is that right? Remember, that's not saying that the argument would be greater than negative 2. But this number right there, the X that goes into the argument, would have to stay bigger than negative 2. All right. This doesn't have a base. The first thing I do right away is fix it. All right. I'm going to have you skip. I think this is a really good problem because it reminds you how to solve quadratics. First step, if you can factor it, you should. And if it can't factor, quadratic formula. A lot of people don't know that second part. You'll pay a price if you don't know that. If you can factor it, you should. If you can't factor, quadratic formula. All right, and I think uh, this one's going a little beyond the pale, <laughs> beyond 140, if you will. Uh, and this would be... Uh, a little bit much also. So, all right, that leaves you uh, the challenger problem. I really do respect kids that are that want to challenge themselves, and they and you can check that answer in the uh, answer key. All right, and that is the end of the set of problems for today. You'll notice we didn't do much with expanding and stuff. That's on tomorrow. So, you're going to have if you can retain what we just did today. You're going to be good for tomorrow. All right. That's all I've got for you for today.